Mean Christians and church bullies. Have any of them ever laid into you too? Today, my story of hope and healing and perhaps one that you need to hear in order to find some healing in your soul from a bad church experience that happened some time ago. All that coming up right now. What's going on everyone? Welcome back for another video. My name is Jason, if this is your first time here. And I'm a Christian and an ex-pastor, and I am all about helping you guys see yourselves as worthy, as valued, and wanted. If that sounds good to you, then start right now by subscribing to the channel, clicking that notification bell, and that way when I post brand new content, you'll already be notified. So, if you've ever dealt with mean Christians, with church bullies, and you felt their sting, and maybe you've left yourself going, why are so many people leaving the church? Well, then this video is just for you and how you can see yourself as God intends you to be seen. Let's get into the content right now, let's go. Guys, right, so I'm just gonna get a little raw with you, maybe a little unfiltered, uncut type of thing, and um, I'm just gonna let you know what it was like for my family and I, how ugly it got with some really nasty, ugly church bullies, mean Christians. But more importantly, how God brought us out of that into a time of healing and hope. And what could that mean for you, and what that could look like for you too, because if you're going through that, well, let me tell you, I understand what it's like to feel hopeless, to feel despair, to feel empty. And if you're there right now, then just hold on and watch this video all the way through. I promise you, it will help you and bring you some hope and healing. And hey, if you're liking what you're hearing already, and I know it's early on, give it a thumbs up and give me a comment below. Okay, I'm gonna back all the way up and just kind of give you some context. In 2012, God brought us from this beautiful small church in North Idaho to here to Mommy, a suburb of Toledo here in Ohio, to St. Paul's Lutheran Church, where I was the senior pastor. And for the longest time, things were fine. It was like a honeymoon period, rose-colored lenses, all that stuff. Despite the fact that as a church, we were bleeding over $50,000 a year. I mean, think about that, that's almost $5,000 a month. Robbing Peter to pay Paul, didn't have the money. And we were overstaffed, and I had to make some hard decisions, so I did. And I let two people go. One who was just downright toxic. And that was confirmed after I let her go because she sent a letter to 72 people telling them how evil I was. And a bunch of them left the church. Made matters worse. I let go of our senior worship leader. Not because I didn't like him. Not because he wasn't an amazing musician, because he is. But his vision for the church didn't necessarily align with mine. And I was a senior pastor and I had to cut some money. So I let him go. And by God's grace, he was picked up within a week by a church literally across the corner, paying him more money than we were and using his talents far better suited to who he is as a person. And he's still there, thank goodness. And I like the guy a whole lot. It just our visions didn't align. Well, that made matters worse and people got angry. And well, things continue to happen. I lost a youth pastor who had been with the church for six years and I had to replace him. And you couldn't replace a guy like that. It just can't happen. And we tried, but I made a bad hire. I brought in, I brought in a guy that needed a whole lot of work, a whole lot of training. And I thought that we could mold him and shape him. And I couldn't. And he did some things and said some things that weren't good for our youth and weren't good for the church. And I should have let him go, but I didn't have the heart to do it. I kept giving him a second chance and a second chance and a second chance. Cause well, I see that God does that with us, but I wasn't seeing the ramifications and until it got really bad. So one day giving him a review, he literally stood up, drew his fist back and he was ready to punch me right before my associate pastor and I, and I gave him an ultimatum and things continue to get worse. And around that time, there were people in the church that were so angry about the budget deficit, so angry with the decisions that I had made that they wanted me gone at all cost. And so they were writing letters weekly, typing them on the computer, putting them in unmarked envelopes with no return address, sending them from Detroit post office boxes so they couldn't be traced, and sending them to my council on a weekly basis saying, how bad and nasty I was and how in league I was with the devil and the language that they were using would have made the church lady blush. I mean, you remember this lady, right? Well, isn't that special? <laughs> okay, you get it. 
We left there under duress and for the while it seemed okay, but honestly, I was suicidal for a while. I didn't know what was up. I didn't know what was down. I tried to start a new church, reframe church, because that's what I felt God calling me to do. But I was so wounded in my soul. I just didn't know what to do. And oh, by the way, if you're wounded right now because of some bullying going on in your life, then check out this video right up here on how to fill your emotional tank when life fails you feeling empty. Check it out. But so we left and people said, don't you understand what you did and how you affected his family? And they didn't care. And they said his daughter was about ready to be confirmed. And they're like, oh, we didn't know. We give her permission to come back and be confirmed. That's a big thing in the Lutheran church. And we were like, oh no, you didn't go there. That took that baby girl of mine four years to spiritually heal. And now she's one of the strongest young Christian women I've ever met. But it took a lot of time for God to heal her soul. It took a long time for God to heal my soul. For the longest time, we didn't go to church anywhere. And eventually we went to a friend's church and we found some healing there. We were there for a while. And we bounced around for the longest time. And I mean the longest time for over three years. Until we finally settled on a church home that now... We were like, oh my gosh, what have we been missing all these years? Had no idea. But it was hard, y'all. It was ugly for the longest time. Bullies are mean. I've buried too many people because of life's bullies. A couple teenagers I've helped bury because they were bullied in life. It sucks. I'm just going to say it. It sucks for what it is. And hurt people in the church can be some of the most angry, meanest people you'll ever deal with. Church bullies, mean Christians. We ask, why are people leaving the church in droves today? Honestly, I think it's because of them. The church that I once served here in Maumee once had over 700 people worshiping in on a Sunday, and now they're down to maybe 120. And it's tragic what's happened there because of mean Christians and mean bullies that have driven so many people like my family and I out of the church. What do you do when you're in that situation? What do you do if you're being bullied in life? Here's some things you can do, some quick, easy things you can do. Are they easy? Yes and no. Just to be honest about it. Number one, take some time for you every single day. Go into a quiet place, as Jesus said, and pray to the Father. Pray to God and say, God, reveal to me how you see me as you created me. Number two, if you're in a church and you're being bullied, you're being harassed, there's mean, nasty, ugly Christians around, step back. If you're in a role, step back. If you're in a position of responsibility or in a volunteer position, a leadership position, whatever have you, consider stepping back. Maybe take some time away from the church for you and your family to heal. And just look for a new church home. I mean, honestly, there's thousands upon thousands upon thousands of churches that would love to have you, that would value you, and that would welcome your presence in their congregation. If it's happening in work, it's a little bit of a different situation. If it's happening with your circle of influence with your friends, step back. If it's happening on social media, step back. Unfollow people. Block them if you have to. Do what you got to do to protect yourself. But lastly, surround yourself with people who love you, who will encourage you, who will uplift you, who will tell you how valued they see you, how worthy they see you, and how wanted you are. Surround yourself with those kind of people because you don't need the toxic, negative people in your life. We just, we don't need them, right? You don't need them, I don't need them, none of us do. If people around you are toxic and nasty, get away from them and surround yourself with people who are going to love you, who are going to value you, who are going to uplift you, who are going to encourage you on a daily, weekly basis. I promise you that if you do those things, you will eventually find hope and you will eventually find healing. I promise you that. So are you feeling encouraged? Give me a simple yes or no down in the comment section. And if you haven't already, give me a thumbs up, like the video, Share it with your friends. And yeah, if you're digging this video, come back for more content. Smash the subscribe button, ring that little notification bell. And that way when I post brand new content on a weekly basis, you'll be notified. And last thing, 
if you're feeling empty, check out this video right up here. As soon as you're done watching this, watch this. How to fill your tank when life's got you feeling empty. Until I get to chat with you over here or on the flip side, I pray that God fills your tank. I pray that God fills you up and that he starts helping you see yourself as he sees you. Worthy, valued, and wanted. And until I get to see you again, God bless.